So you're thinking of swapping out the engine on your BMW E30. Let me give you the pros and cons between a multi-valve and an M20. Common in the BMW world is a 24-valve multi-valve as well as an M20 motor. But before we get going, let me give you a bit of history on the BMW 3 to 5. BMW? BMW? Yeah. In South Africa, the BMW E30 is not just a car. It's a legend on four wheels. Built in Rosland, these cars were the go-to ride for enthusiasts, race car drivers, driving a BMW. And the average person who just wanted sheer driving pleasure before BMW complicated things with their fancy electronics. So what made it an icon? It was light, terrorized the racetracks as well as the township streets. It also boasted motorsport royalty where it competed in the Group N. It had a beautiful M20 motor that made sounds that are extremely desirable on the ear. Apart from that, it had street culture. Back in the early 80s, 90s, if you owned one of these, you were pretty much a celebrity. But even up until now, many consider the BMW E30 to be the OGs of BMWs. I mean, if you see one on the street, truly respected, it might have gone through a tougher life than you. Take mine for example, it had rust in the boot, rust in the bonnet, rust on the floor, I had to change the entire floor, I mean, that's a rough life. So you got a BMW E30 and you're itching to make more power, and you're considering potentially engine swapping. Well then you came to the right place, because in this video, I'm going to break down what it takes to swap a multi-valve into an E30, or to extract maximum power out of an E30 M20 motor, by turbocharging it. Some may describe this motor as old school, talky and full of soul. The M20 B25 is the heart and soul of the E30, delivering silky smooth power. M20 is a very talky motor, making it perfect for low down power and everyday driving. So just what makes the actual motor of the M20 B25 so talky? Well, Number one, there's a long stroke and a small bore. It's what's known in the motor industry as an undersquare design. The undersquare design on this particular motor means that the piston has an 84mm bore and a 75mm stroke, which ultimately transfers into better crank leverage and more low-end torque. The other aspect that gives it its torque is the single overhead cam design. Its simplicity in the actual design makes it a lot more torquier but less free revving than the dual overhead cams produced in the later models. Another aspect that makes this car so torquey is the flywheel. It's extremely heavy and a heavy flywheel will generate more torque at the bottom of end of the rev range. So because these motors are known to fall flat on their face at high RPM, BMW came out with the 885 head. When they came out with the 885 head, they raised the compression ratio to 9.7 to 1. Raising the compression ratio basically gave it a little bit more better torque throughout the rev range, not just at the bottom and then boom, falling flat on your face. The M20 delivers considerable amount of bottom end torque, which makes it extremely fun for daily driving or taking it out occasionally on a wet day and getting a little bit naughty. But what makes this motor extremely fun is that it's usable power. You want more out of this motor? Then you can stroke this motor. Stroking this motor involves removing the pistons, removing the rods. There are various situations in which you can uh, stroke. You can go from a 2.5 to a 2.7 to a 2.9 and you can even go to 3 liter if you want or 3.2 liter it just depends on what type of stroke you're looking for and as well as you can change the cam on the car whether you want a 272 cam a 284 a 288 a 292 they all have their application the lower the number the more streetable it is in the mid range would be good for occasional track days and a bit of spirited driving on the m1 However, the higher the number, the more grantier the idle will become, making it less drivable in the street and more track focused. 
So one of the considerations that people will generally do a motor swap on the BMW E30 is because this is old school technology. It has a single overhead cam, one camshaft that runs across the entire head. The reason being is that there's not so many valves in an M20. There's only 12 valves, meaning two valves per cylinder. Generally, the intake valve would be bigger than the exhaust valve. So a single overhead cam with two lobes on it will control both the intake and the exhaust. So there wasn't no need for a dedicated intake camshaft and an exhaust shaft. Later, BMW introduced the dual overhead cam, which basically gave it its more efficient motor, delivering a little bit more power. Another disadvantage that this particular motor has is that with a single overhead cam, you cannot precisely adjust and manipulate the intake and exhaust timing on this car. Therefore, you cannot get the pure top-end exhilarating performance out of a single overhead camshaft engine. This is a very low revving engine due to the design of the head, due to the number of cams that it has. However, it's old technology. It's heavy. It's not as heavy as a multi-valve, but it's still old technology. So now let me introduce you to the contender in this particular boxing match. The most popular engine swap on a BMW E30 is a multi-valve motor. These motors came in a variety of flavors. We had the M50 B25, we had the M52 B28, then we had the S50, which came from the E36 M3, and then we also can use the S54, which is the 3.2 liter version. What makes this motor such a desirable swap is that it has 24 valves, dual overhead cams, it has newer technology, it's so much easier to turbo. In stock format, it makes, in fact, it makes 189 horsepower as opposed to 169 on the M20. And also, they're readily available. Many people are scrapping these motors, so it's easy to find. So one of the first things that needs to change when you're doing an M multi-valve swap is the sump. The sumps need to be a front-facing sump. So you can see the bucket or the bowl of the sump is in the front. Generally, on the multi-valves, the bowl sits at the back. So what you need to do is you need to utilize the sump from a BMW E34 5 to 5. If you want better stock power, a high revving motor, that's if you already didn't get the M50 B25 from an E34. Because if you get it from an E34 5 to 5, then it's just, I would say, plug and play with minor odd and end changes. The next thing is the engine ears. So you would utilize the engine ears from the BMW E36. Some guys use a mix of E36 and E30 on the other side. It's just how you want the motor to sit. However, the engine mounts would also need to change. Again, some guys use those from the E28, uh, E20, I think it's the E28 M5 as, or the E36. Or you can even use, use the, utilize the Ford V6 engine mount. It's basically just to get the height of the motor. So you can just get the height of the motor, but you can play around with the engine mount to see as to where you want the motor to sit. The next challenge comes in, in terms of the brake booster. Multi-valve motors has a very wide. So this is a bad example because I recently changed this particular intake to an M50 B25. Originally, I had an intake from the M52 B28, which is much longer. So it poses a problem in terms of the brake booster. What happens is, is that the intake manifold touches the brake booster. In the past, guys used to use the Golf brake booster and put it on the side. But nowadays, guys use the brake booster from the E90. So I just lowered my brake booster and I utilized a brake bottle from a BMW 2002 to make it look neat. I did not like the chunky look of the E90 reservoir bottle. Now, with the brake booster sitting down, 
The next challenge comes in as to what management you need to run. Generally, when you're running an OEM management, you would run what's known as an airflow meter. You'll run the airflow meter. When you're running an aftermarket management, you need not run an airflow meter. You can run it merely by getting your crank signal, by giving it fuel, giving it spark in your cam position or your crank position sensor, and the car should start. If you want old school technology and you're old school in nature, then the M20 is for you. But if you're looking for something more modern and future proof and something that can eventually be turbocharged and make tremendous amount of power that could surprise a modern day BMW, then the M50 is your choice. I hope you guys enjoyed this particular video. If there's any other topics you would like me to speak about, let me know in the comment section.